variables. So before we get into variables, first I want to go over literals. Literals are values that can only be interpreted in one way. For example, quote John quote is text, and it can only be interpreted as John. 4 is the value 4. 56.5 is the value 56.5. Negative 8 is the value of negative 8. A single quote M single quote is actually a character value, and characters are surrounded by single quotes, similar to how text is surrounded by double quotes. Variables are containers that hold a specific type of data, but the data they hold can be changed. For example, if we, in math, you might have a variable x. x might hold 5 on a different point on the line, it might hold 8. Now we're not dealing with lines, but the idea is you have a variable, something that can be changed. Its value can be mutated throughout the life of your program. When we're working with variables, our variables are going to be one of two types primitives or objects. Primitives are eight basic, there are eight basic built in primitive types in Java. All the primitives type, all the primitive types start with lowercase letters. So if, if you're ever looking at a type and you don't know if it's a primitive or not, if it has a lowercase letter, it's a primitive. The first primitive we're covering is int, which stores whole numbers. An example would be 7. Double, which stores numbers with decimal places. 6.8 is a number with a decimal place. 4 is also a number with a decimal place. You may not see them, but it would be 0. .0000. So you can store whole numbers into doubles. Boolean stores true or false. An example would be true. Notice it doesn't have any quotes around either side of it. It's not text, it's not a letter, it's just the value true. Char stores letters or characters, and they have single quotes around them. Single quote C, single quote is the letter C. Objects are more complicated types. As we move on, we're gonna as we move on, we're gonna learn more about objects, but objects store more complicated data and can perform actions on that complicated data. And we'll see some examples of that when we get to math and scanner classes later in this chapter. So the only type we're going to talk about right now is string. Notice it has capital letter because it's not a primitive. Strings can store words and text. And we've been exposed to string literals already when we've been doing our print commands because print and printf both receive a string literal. String literals are surrounded with quotes chars. Chars display as symbols, but they are stored as numbers. Remember, the computer stores everything as zeros and ones, and that's a number system called binary. So every character also has an integer value associated with it. We're going to need to memorize these character values. Single quote space, single quote is the value for space, and it's 32. Capital A is the numeric value 65. B is 66, C is 67, so forth. A is 97, L sorry, lowercase a is 97, lowercase b is 98. 0 is 48, 1 is 49. By knowing these beginning locations, we can derive many other values. We can derive any lowercase letter, any uppercase letter, and any number. Naming variables. When making variables, use the following rules. The variable name should start with a lowercase letter. The variable name can only contain letters and underscores. A variable name can be of any length. A, each word beyond the first word should have an uppercase letter or be separated by an underscore. And I should have put and or there. You could do both if you liked. Um, so practice. Joe is a valid variable name. Five ball is not a valid variable name because it does not start with a letter. Ball five is valid. It starts with a letter and only has numbers and letters. Student name is valid and it's a pretty good way to separate. We see student and then we see name because name has a, couple, a capital N. Student hyphen name is invalid because we can only use we can only use characters, we can only use numbers and underscores. Bat underscore man is perfectly fine. Students, caret, name is invalid as well. 
because it has a symbol that we're not allowed to use, the caret. Declaring variables. Creating a variable is called declaring, and it is done once. You only declare, once you declare a variable, it exists from that point on in your program. The format for declaring a single variable is data type, space, variable name, semicolon. Example, int would be our data type. The name of our container or variable would be called age, and we have to put a semicolon behind that. If we wanted to declare multiple variables, they would all have to be of the same type, but it would be data type, variable name, comma, variable name, comma, variable name, comma, variable name, so forth. An example would be double, space, radius, comma, circumference, semicolon. This creates two different containers, one called radius, one called circumference, and they are both of type double. Assigning and initializing. Assigning is when a variable is given a value, so you assign a variable a value. Initializing is the first time a variable is given a value. Assigning, variable name equals value. So we had age that we had declared on the last example. We could say age equals 15. Notice we're not saying int age. When we made our variable, we let Java know that it was an int container. From that point on, Java knows it's an int container. It'll freak out if you try to put text in it, but it's perfectly fine if you put whole numbers in it. So you say the container name, age, equals value, which is 15. Age now holds 15. Later, age could be changed to something else, because variables are allowed to change the data they store. Declaring and initializing in one step. Data type, variable name, equals value. For example, string name equals Jimbo. So, Jimbo's the text that's being stored into name. But this is a combination. You're both declaring and assigning. But since it's the first assignment, it's called initialization. So string name is declared, and it's initialized with Jimbo in one line of code. Beyond this point, you do not say string name again. Remember, Java will remember that you declared name as a string constants. Constants are variables that cannot be changed once they have been initialized. So declaring a constant variable. Final data type variable name equals value. Example, final int student stations equals 34. Now in this example, I have student stations equals 34, and I followed the normal naming conventions for variables. I'm not going to go back and re-record the video, but I will change it. But I will go ahead and ask you to make an additional note. So please make a note. Please make the please add the following note to your to the notes you're taking. <laughs> when declaring a final variable, the variable name should be in all caps. Because the variable name is in all caps, we can't say, well, capitalize the beginning of the next word. So how you separate words when you're declaring finals, since everything is in caps, you need to use the rule of use an underscore. So student stations should have been all caps student underscore station in all caps. And this that would define the constant variable student stations. It would be an int, and it would never be able to be changed again. If you tried to change the value of that variable later in the program, you would get a compilation error. It would fail to compile because by setting final, you're agreeing that you will never change that variable. Possible loss of precision. This is a common error that occurs when you try to store a complicated type into a simpler type. For example, ints can only hold whole numbers. Decimal points are more complicated than what an int can store. So if you said int x equals 3.9, you would get an error. A whole number container cannot store decimal places. You, the error you would actually get is possible loss of precision. So that's why I have it up there. Casting allows one type to temporarily be treated as another. The format for this is parentheses whatever you want to treat something as, parentheses, followed by the variable that you're wanting to treat differently. 
or the value. It doesn't necessarily have to be a variable. Usually it's a variable. An example would be char a equals single quote c single quote. That's an uppercase c, which 65 is a that we talked about later, 66 is b, 67 would be c. So down here when we say system.out.println, parenthesis int parenthesis a. Remember, all characters have integer values. So we're saying treat a as though it were an integer. It doesn't make it an integer. It just says in this circumstance, treat that value as though it were an int. And the int value that corresponds to the character c would be 67, so it would print 67. Now notice on the next line I say system.out.print a. It would print c because we didn't turn a into an int. We temporarily treated the value that a stored as an int in the previous line. So a still stores c. Concatenation is the joining of text and any other type of data. The symbol for concatenation, when I ask you on a test, is plus. It's also the symbol for addition. So you need to know that if one of the items, either on the left or the right of a plus, is text, you're actually performing concatenation. Teachers and faculty, there is food that you can go by and take home from Carabas in both lounges. And there is chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken still left in the uh, home ec room from the other night. So please go by and pick up some food to take home. Thank you. All right. So some of you are getting to know me. That was apparently an announcement saying there was free food. And it sounded like chicken fried steak and chicken fried chicken. But alas, I am a vegetarian, so I cannot partake in the free food. All right. If you want to know why, ask me in class. All right. Now let's go over some examples of a join or a join called concatenation. That is when one item is text and the other is anything. No matter what the other item is, it's concatenation. Six plus years old would be six years old. Remember in math we always go left right. You go left right in computer science too. So six years old. Bob plus is tall, and I didn't have a space before the is. So let's go fix that one real quick. So Bob, we'll just finish it out here. I think this is our last slide. Let's go ahead and press F5, and we'll swap this over. Going all the way to the end, and back one. So Bob plus is tall. Notice how there's a space before is now. So Bob space is tall. These two are concatenated, joined together to make a new text. Bob is tall, is the, is the answer. Here we have 6 plus 7. On the left, we have an int. On the right, we have an int. 6 plus 7 is 13. So that part's finished, and we're left with... Let me see if I can get a marker. So, laser pointer, nope, pen. So what we really have is 13 plus 3. That produces 13 joined with 3, joined, concatenation, it just tacks it on the end, 133. Over here, if you notice, it's quote 3, quote, plus 6. That would result in a concatenation, which would be 36, plus 7. Now this is concatenation because 36 is text plus 7 equals 3, 6, 7. Alright, and I think that concludes our video over variables and some of the basic data types.